Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Some of you might recognize this video. This is the ASMR video unboxing of Chanel's Coco shower gel, body lotion, eau de parfum 100 ml, and then touching base on the sensorial aspect of all of the Coco products from the soap to their refillable eau de parfum to the eau de toilette and to the pure parfum. Um, what I'm doing here now is recording my audio as I am watching the video with you guys. So I will be uh, reviewing these products as well as uh, commenting on Chanel and Coco in general. So this is an 80s perfume. Chanel releases Coco posthumously. So Coco Chanel died in 1971. But the first huge release, I mean, Cristal was released, was developed during Chanel's life and then was released right at her death, after her death, in Paris, perhaps slightly before her death, but after Cristal, uh, which was Henri Robert's last work in the eau de toilette form, Jacques Polge takes over and releases the eau de parfum of Cristal, but the first major release for Jacques Polge for Chanel in the 80s is Coco. So, Coco has gone through several transformations. We do not have the exact one-to-one -one formulation today that we had in the 80s, but it is nevertheless very much true to itself. It's remained quite true to itself. The wonderful carnation in Coco uh, and the clove is still there today, even and despite the IFRA regulations. Now, other transformations it went through, well, the body cream, the body lotion, the shower gel, the consistency as well as the formula is not the same as it used to be. It is adapted to modern day times, but how is it today? So these products, as you're seeing right now, what we have here is the body lotion and this beautiful black plastic container. Uh, I'm going to unscrew the stopper in a couple of seconds. Um, what I've realized when I unscrewed it, it's very heavy and hefty. It's as if they almost, it's a full plastic. It's not a cheap stopper. It really feels very, very substantial in the hand when, you, when you're having it. There, there you go. Now I'm holding the stopper. <laughs> That's when I'm realizing that it's actually really substantial. But the liquid itself, so I have used these products several days now in a row. It's amazing. On its own, so I've tested out showering with non-cocoa shower gel and then putting cocoa body lotion on. I have done also the version of showering with cocoa shower gel, but then not putting the body lotion on. Then I've done showering with cocoa, putting the body lotion cocoa, and then the eau de parfum on top. I've also done putting the eau de toilette on top. I'm still going to go for the experimentation of putting the pure parfum on top. So I've done, I've done all of these different... Uh, combinations and variations of it just to understand how it blooms and develops on the skin because it's quite rare that somebody really goes for the full-blown experience of what one fragrance has to offer in terms of um, the entire spectrum and range from the bath body products all the way to the to the perfume. Coco delivers I have to say so how is the Shower, the modern day shower gel. I have a batch code. I have it now here in my hand also, but you can see it in the video. It's a 4301. So it's a relatively new one. It's right. It, it's from this year. It could be the end of last year. And the body lotion is a 4601. So um, it's a very oily consistency. The shower gel is colored in this dense, ambery, almost borderline brown. It's like a gold, amber, brown color. It's delicious to look at. You think it's like a couple of degrees higher than honey in terms of how voluptuous it looks. It's it's just that dark that you know it's not honey. It could be a cognac or a brandy type of color, but it's just a little bit lighter than a cognac and a brandy. So it's between honey and brandy between honey and the cognac and that's what makes it feel so luxurious because you're going between this edible and this alcoholic now the shower gel doesn't have alcohol in it and you can see here as I'm I finally unfolded the cardboard that's containing it and look how it reflects the light or how the light goes through it you can see it on my uh, palm there how that gold just kind of like 
caresses my my palm. It's just so beautiful. I was so mesmerized as I unboxed it because, of course, I was doing it for the first time. That unboxing is a real unboxing, as you see how I had to take the foil off of the box and just seeing it for the first time. It's really that beautiful. And again, the stopper makes it that much more special. So when you glide it on your skin, it's very... It has an oily texture, but with water, of course, it's not oil based, it's water based, but it does feel nourishing more so than the Chanel number no. five shower gel, bath and shower gel. In fact, if you notice, this one is not called a bath gel, it's called a foaming shower gel. So they're not adding the bath description to this product. And in fact, I have showered with it, I have not taken a bath with it yet. Um, the way it smells on the skin, you have to look for cocoa. It's not immediate, especially out of the bottle. I'm going to open it now and smell. It doesn't um, have that immediate cocoa texture, but it's almost, it's, it's a bit clinical. It's a little bit uh, medicinal. It's a herbally woodsy smell. A dust, uh, dusty, perhaps an incense woodsy smell, even though this is not an incense fragrance, but the shower gel has that note going for it. It doesn't go in the direction of the carnations uh, that the Eau de Parfum goes into. It doesn't go into that sweet territory that uh, the Eau de Parfum, or even more so the Pure Parfum, go into. Eau de Toilette doesn't go too sweet. It stays woodsy and slightly dry. And dare I say, even though I really don't like to talk about gender and perfumes, it's quite masculine smelling. It's a very woods it's like you're going into the forest in a lumberjack type of vibe to it and and there's moss all around you and it's it's a forest in early autumn so it's still plump and rich and dense the, the, the brown hues are just starting to shimmer through some trees but you still have particularly important to note is the earth the soil of this forest that we're in covered with all of these plants and all this vegetation that is just it's just so rich as you're walking over it you can hear the crispy sound of the tiny branches just crickling under your feet but you also feel the softness the damp softness of all of the mosses that you're stepping on as you're walking and that's coco the shower gel now um you've just seen me unbox the soap unfortunately the soap is discontinued so i purchased the last one that was literally as i purchased it paid it it was shipped as i received the shipping confirmation i rechecked online it was sold i was gone uh the soap is the only one of the products that smells best if not used you literally should buy the soap and put it in your wardrobe and everything in the wardrobe is going to smell of cocoa that's how amazing it is if you use it on your skin it dries you out too much so i don't recommend that unless you have really oily skin but that could mess with your pH balance in general and your oil uh, balance of your skin. So it's a bit tricky, but, uh, and, and it also doesn't smell much of cocoa once it's come in contact with water. So the soap is amazing to put in your drawer, to put where your clothes are, just to keep everything smelling so fresh and divine. And it goes for years. I have had one of these soaps for over 10 years now. Um, it is in my wardrobe. The wardrobe still smells incredibly of that particular soap so that is definitely the best investment that you can buy because it's just never ending unlike perfumes that go empty if you, and i even keep the soap in its original foliage so it doesn't dry out so that foil that you saw me uh, that you saw in the video i keep that around the soap as well it smells through that foil the foil just preserves it from drying out so you're going to keep the soap fresh for even longer and my over 10 year old soap is in its foil so here I'm unboxing the Eau de Parfum. I have never had the 100 milliliter spray bottle of it. And so I was thinking, well, you know what? Let's let's buy it because as you, for those of you who follow me on my channel, you've seen me post another video where I mentioned that um, we're going to get issues because of this situation that we're going through and the health hazards that we're going through in this world. Everything is on lockdown. The harvesting of the plants and the raw materials it's very tricky we're losing a lot of flowers because a lot of them are not being harvested so what's going to happen in the future well we're going to have probably shortage in some perfumes we're going to see sellouts of certain perfumes but also my worry because we do have 
synthetic ingredients that can substitute the natural ones nowadays. My worry is that a lot of these major brands are going to go cheap on us in order to fulfill the quantities, the production that they still want to produce and the quantities that they wish to produce in order to turn a good profit. I'm worried that they might go you know, a little bit cheap on us in terms of watering down the formulas using less of the really good ingredients or less of any ingredients that they used to use in the past in favor of cheaper solutions just to keep on producing in the year or years to come. So I thought to myself, now is the best time to purchase what I've never had, which is the 100 ml uh, bottle version of cocoa, the Eau de Parfum, as it is still in its pre-disease uh, era formulation. Oh my gosh, could you believe it? We're going to probably start talking about perfumes like the pre and post uh, disease era. Yeah, it sounds terrible, but that's what it is. So as I sprayed cocoa, the fresh batch, you know, it still had no oxygen in it. It, it divine. It smells slightly different from my refillable, rechargeable 60 ml Eau de Parfum spray, but that's because the rechargeable, I've had it, I don't know, three years now uh, or four. Um, and so it had some time to also age and it's become a more ambery smell while the fresh batch is more floral. Beautiful. Both of them are just hypnotizing and hypnotic. But let's get back slowly, quickly, I mean, to the body lotion again. So after the shower gel, and I usually rub it all over my body twice, right? Rub it, create the foam, breathe it in as I rub it on. It's so delicious. And then I wash it off. And then I go for the second round. And it's it's just even that more delayed. I have the feeling my pores absorb it even more. And then when I'm done, I dry myself. And then uh, with a towel, the fresh towel, of course, and then I take the moisturizing body lotion. And oh my gosh, let's smell it now. This added on top of the shower, of your scented skin, lightly scented of that woodsy forest that we've just walked through. A forest that has some resins on it as well. Um, you know, trees with resins on it. I mean, it's, oh, it's that delicious. Then you put the lotion on and you add that level of smoky honey level to it and it's evoking a memory of a flower and we're going to get to the flower right now the flower which uh, you can check out my um, uh, podcast together with uh, uh, Emilio by the way check out also his channel really great uh, perfume lover and huge knowledge on perfumes so we did a podcast together on Coco and what we were like, we came to this conclusion at a certain point throughout the podcast saying, oh my gosh, you know what it is that is really making this perfume so magically special? It's the rose. Most, nobody ever really thinks of the rose when they think about cocoa. There's so many other things going for it. A lot of people, you know, call it a, an oriental, which to me it's not really. But the rose is the mystery of cocoa particular the May Rose and I've discovered this personally now it it's it smells if you're just wearing the Eau de Parfum in the Eau de Toilette you don't really sense it out as much in the pure perfume you sense it out more in the Eau de Parfum it comes across as a dusty type of rose but only if you envision only if you think about it being a rose you know oh you actively think of the rose and you go oh okay so this is what I'm smelling here could be a rose but and here is the magic. When you combine the shower gel with the body lotion, and then after you're done with that and the body has absorbed the body lotion nicely, you're all well hydrated, 20 minutes in, you spray on the Eau de Parfum. Oh my God. I was knocked off my feet. I was high on cocoa. But most of all, you know, for those of you who ever played video games in your lives, it, you know how you in some video games you can either collect a certain amount of points to unlock certain levels in other video games you gotta play through all the levels of the game in order to unlock a hidden secret level well this is what i felt by applying shower gel body lotion and eau de parfum it's like those three levels <laughs> you reach the tier four level four you unlock that special level where literally a gate it's like i'm in front of i'm in this forest right and i've added the resins with the body lotion and then all of a sudden here i am 
in front of me, all of these trees and this green, and I hear the breeze and, and the wind just whispering as it cuts through the trees, you know, and all of a sudden two trees just shift, they move, and they open up a gateway, and I go through the gateway, and I'm in this meadow filled with May roses, beautiful rose and pink colored May roses, and they are so sweetly scented and so clear, not dusty anymore, that memory that we had of a rose when we spoke about just the eau de parfum is gone now. Now we have a full-blown, sweet May rose. And now it's the end of April as I'm filming. It's almost May. It's the perfect time to talk about May rose because I'm telling you, it's incredible. These three products combined unlock the secret garden of Coke. Coco's secret garden. And that secret garden has that full-blown rose and it's so crystal crisp and clear when you combine the three products together. It's mesmerizing. I don't know what to say. I'm addicted to it. And so like, I can't wait to take another shower because then I go through the whole process again. And I'm like really excited to go to bed, even though we're in isolation and there's no going out. But then you're like, you know, you might go like, oh, well, why even dress up? Why even take care about anything anymore? You know, just like stay home, have a snack, watch some movies. Well, no, I decide to be productive. I decide to make my life have some sort of meaning in this weird uh, times we're living in. So I produce more and I'm thankful that I can produce more because I do have a camera and I do have access to internet and I want to make the best of my time. And part of it is also enjoying these little pleasures. More now than ever before do I understand the magic of perfumes because I'm literally, literally only wearing them for myself. And I've said this in all my videos, I always say you wear perfumes for yourself, not for others. But now we have the biggest proof that that's how it should be. Because why? We're not going out. Well, a lot of us are not. The ones of us who do stay at home, uh, who are you going to wear it for? Okay, if you're not in isolation alone, you're with somebody you, you love, your loved ones, your family, it's a different story. They might even be annoyed by the fact that you're overdoing with perfume. But I'm wearing it for myself. I get so much pleasure out of taking my shower, it's like my ritual, it's like my religious moment, I take my shower, put on my lotion, put on perfume, I, I then lay on my couch, and I'm just like inhaling <laughs> the smell permeating the air, and I'm just like in heaven, and it makes me dream, it makes me go places, I'm literally not in my house anymore, but I'm somewhere else, and I envision these meadows, and these gardens, and these gates opening up, and and then, of course, as you're seeing now in the video, I'm playing again with the uh, body lotion. Look how it's reflecting the light. And I'm putting it next to the Eau de Parfum 100 ml spray bottle. Literally, the added layer to the wonderful smell. These bottles, the design, it's just so beautiful. And I'm actually really thankful that the body gel and uh, the body lotion and the shower gel, that they do not have stickers on them because... That's what makes the Lezou range of body products complicated because of, you know, the body lotions have stickers on them, which really go yellow and they damage themselves as you use the product. But this is just so perfect. Simple. Yes, I know it's plastic. Could have been more beautiful if it were glass, but then it would have been also more delicate and you couldn't kind of squish the liquid out as you can now with the plastic bottle. But the fact that you're holding this jewel and it's cut like a diamond, that's why it's etched on the sides the way it is. I mean, it, it it's just perfect. You, you can't do anything wrong with this, <laughs> seriously. So, Coco is definitely, and I've said this before, also on my Instagram channel, by the way, Super Decaball spelled together, uh, if you want to follow me there, uh, follow my fragrant and fashion obsessions. The, you know, Coco, the fragrance and the entire bath range to me is the only perfume that I deem a true Chanel perfume that has been released after Coco Chanel's life so what does this mean since 1971 since Chanel has passed away uh, all the fragrances that have been released after her death a lot of them are wonderful beautiful perfumes but Coco is really the only one that has that heft Coco is the only one released after her life that we can say Boy, this is a true Chanel perfume. And Jacques Polge really delivered on that. 
we can love the Les Exclusives range, we can love Coromandel, we can love um, even Sycamore, even though you know that Sycamore in, in its name already existed in the 40s within the Chanel perfume range. Uh, of course, it was a totally different scent, but the name already existed. So did Blue, for example, or Beige. But they were different perfumes with different concepts. But if, you know, Coromandel is a very particular type of patchouli fragrance, and it's it, it has a charm to it, and it has a heft, and it has this oriental vibe to it, and depth. But it's chic in a way that it doesn't, to me, feel like the opulence of a complexity of a Chanel perfume. Coco is complex. Coco is way more complex than Coromandel, even though Coromandel is much deeper than Coco in terms of how it smells. But the name Coco delivers what Chanel was, her, her as Coco. While, on the other hand, with Gabrielle, we do not have that. We don't have a younger version of Chanel when she was just Gabrielle, when she was not Mademoiselle Chanel yet. I don't feel that when I smell Gabrielle. It doesn't feel like a Chanel perfume to me. Coco is pure Chanel. It is quintessential Chanel. And after Coco, I'm not talking about... Um, after Coco, there have not been other pure Chanel perfumes. And I'm not talking about the flankers to, you know, Chanel number no. 5. I'm not talking about Chanel number no. 5, Lou. Uh, that's outside of this range. I'm talking about newly released perfumes, right? New releases. Which one smells of Chanel? I mean, you could say in the, in the male releases uh, that Egoist was perhaps a little bit... You could say Egoist in its first release, which was actually called Bois Noir. Bois Noir was a little bit more Chanel-ish. <laughs> well, it was more close to Bois des Îles. But Egoist, with its 90s release and then subsequent watering downs and the actual current formulation of it, it's a shadow of its former self. It's not as intense as it used to be in the 90s. So Egoist today is less of what it used to be in the past. And so this is a problem. Why is it a problem? It's a problem because... The consumer that hasn't tested it out in the past doesn't have a reference point, so they're led to believe that that is what Egoist is today. But if you do get a chance to sniff out how it used to smell, you will realize that that might have been close to what a Chanel perfume is supposed to be, but it's not really how it, you know, but today, what you have today from Egoist is not how it used to be, so it's not really as Chanel. While Coco remains intense, remains powerful, remains complex, even today, even though its sales are not as big as they used to be, even though, uh, you know, the amount of, the effort put into its marketing is zero, they're not promoting it, there's no advertisement campaigns for it anymore, Coco is still amazing, and I am shocked that they still have today, well, the deodorant, I don't really care for, I think the deodorant is a joke, but I'm shocked that they still have the deodorant, the spray deodorant, that they still have the the shower gel, the body lotion, the body cream, the eau de toilette, the eau de parfum, and the pure parfum. And that the eau de parfum is made in, in a rechargeable bottle as well. Now, my note to you is get the rechargeable one if you can, because already now in some countries it has been discontinued. It's only available in a few countries still. They're taking it off the market because people aren't buying it anymore. And of course, the soap is now gone too. They started discontinuing the soaps Two years ago, last year, they discontinued number 19. This year, it's Coco's turn. In fact, on the Chanel website, the soap is gone. So if you find them in any perfumeries left over, buy the soap if you like Coco and put it in your wardrobe. It's going to be amazing. It's going to smell forever. So moving on from that, we have the Pure Perfume, which I just put down. I was testing that one out. Now, the Pure Perfume has also changed in color. The way that the Pure Perfume was... Uh, presented in the 80s, especially the advertisement campaigns, it had an ambery, a light ambery color. Now it's more of a kind of a greenish ambery color, but the smell is nevertheless the most true 
as how it used to smell in the 80s. So I definitely recommend if you do find it, it's being discontinued as well from a mass release. I think they're shifting. I think Chanel is shifting towards making the pure perfume available only in their beauty boutiques and some exclusive selected shops. Uh, they used to have it in a variety of sizes. They had a 7.5 ml, 15 ml, 30 ml. They even had a 56 ml uh, splash bottle. They even had a 7.5 ml spray version. All discontinued. Now you can only find the 15 milliliter. Up until two years ago, they had 7.5 and 15 ml. As of now, um, depending on which Chanel website you're looking at, which country, most countries either don't have it or have it in 15 ml splash. Uh, 7.5 ml splash, I'm not even sure if it's still available in France. That's also on the verge of being extinct. So that's another thing to think about. Uh, you know, I've been asked this several times, oh, what's happening to haute couture? Haute couture is disappearing. You know, just to be very clear, what is haute couture? Haute couture is creating clothes by hands. No machines were used. You just It's custom made to fit the wearer and it's made by hand. No, not not by machine. So one particular model of dress can be made several times for several clients, but it will be custom tailored for them by hand. So this is an art that's been dying out. The prices are also extremely expensive. Now, especially with uh, the crisis, the health crisis we're going through in the world, uh, shows cannot happen. Even huge brands like Chanel are not going to showcase their haute couture collection. They might do it online in a more shortened version well they're going to save a lot of money that way maybe they can saving a lot of millions in presenting a fashion show the way that chanel used to present it they could save a lot of money by doing that so they could pay their people so it, it's not all that bad not showcasing a fashion show the way that they do as a big show but a lot of brands are just not doing haute couture anymore so i think similar with perfumes the pure parfums are kind of like an haute couture version not really, because they're not completely handmade, obviously, and they're not really tailored to you. It's that bottle, you buy it with that juice in it, and that's that, so it's not... But anyway, within the perfume range, if we compare them to Haute Couture, you could say the Pure Parfum is kind of like an Haute Couture, and it's dying out. Less and less brands are producing them, and they're shortening their options in terms of sizes and how, you know, sprays as opposed to splashes, and vice versa. And the same is going to happen uh, with... Uh, with perfumes, we're going to see less and less of that. We're going to see less and less of the haute couture, I think, in the future. What some brands will maintain, it's not going to be haute couture. It's going to be an exclusive service that they will offer to famous, rich people. So they might create something for a red carpet event, for some gala, for some star or starlet. You might be seeing some exclusive made piece to promote the brand, of course, also. Because if a famous person is wearing the brand and it's obvious what brand they're wearing, then it's a great promotion for the brand as well. Um, so they're going to be making these pieces for these people, one-offs, just to wear on the red carpet. And that's going to be the exclusivity range. That's how far it's going to go. I don't think they're going to do full-blown 40 to 80 pieces. I mean, there's a very rigorous, in France, it's a very rigorous and strict canon. How, what's the minimum amount of clothes you have to make in the Haute Couture selection in order for your collection to be called an Haute Couture collection? I don't know if it's, it's over 40, 50, 60. I don't know the exact number right now, but all of that is disappearing, really. So, you know, uh, we're going to have the pret a -Poter collections and then we're going to have these on the side extra exclusive atelier pieces made for some special people. Vivian Westwood is doing it already since many years. You have their atelier, their bridal collection, their atelier collection. A lot of those stars that run on the red carpets of the Cannes Film Festival, of the, the Oscars, of the um, any movie premiere really, uh, they Westwood does do you know clothes for them. They're not all handmade. They have some bits of the garments are made by hand, but most of it is also machine made within their ateliers, their one-offs, but there is no fashion show to showcase these pieces. These pieces are made because a certain star or starlet requires a certain piece in a certain way. So in a way, you know, because what Chanel does with Haute Couture, Karl Lagerfeld used to do it, but then now Virginie Via does it. They She draws, designs a collection, and those are the pieces. They hit the runway, and then from that moment on, the rich people and the stars and whoever can afford it goes and orders and buys them. But the way that uh, a lot of other brands work, like Westwood does, they talk to the artist that's going to go on the runway or uh, not on the runway, on the red carpet. And then, you know, 
they create something together. So similar to what happened, I think you could say similar to what Chanel did for Billie Eilish for the Oscars red carpet with that kind of grandma look that they gave her. That was something made for her in particular that didn't really hit any runway. Not that I know of. Maybe it did, but they definitely altered it so much to make it oversized and clumpy just for her. We're going to see more of that in the future. Is that a good thing? I mean, I think there's no way out of it. I think it's the only way to go. It, and in perfumery, it's as of now also the only way to go. Um, Money seems to really be dictating every. There's no more no more voluptuousness. It's like these brands are not ready to invest a little bit in the voluptuousness of life, the luxury of just having this beautiful packaging, beautiful product, even though it doesn't sell as much, just to keep it in rotation. Chanel is still doing it with their haute couture for now, and they're still doing it also with most of their pure perfume fragrances. But most other brands don't do it, and they're not going to keep doing it. So the fact that I found it quite surprising, to be honest with you, that last year Chanel released Coromandel, the pure perfume. It's very rare for a brand nowadays to launch a pure perfume, just a pure perfume. I mean, Coromandel has been launched already over a decade ago, and then 2016, 2017 as an Eau de Parfum again. So we already have Coromandel, but the pure perfume was just launched last year. I thought that was a huge luxury move because, I mean, let's face it, nobody's buying it. Or not in the quantity that you would have to buy it for it to really be profitable for them. Moves like that move are not happening anymore. It's an art that's dying out now, especially with the crisis we're in. It's going to happen even less. So when it comes to Coco, and this is why I'm enjoying it so much, I have the feeling I'm in isolation now. And I want to come as close as I can to this haute couture feeling of the world of fragrances when they were at their peak, at their height. And Coco was released in the mid-80s. And that was the peak and height of luxury, of this kind of opulent decadence of joie de vivre, of not caring about, you know, the troubles that, that you might have economically in your life. It's more about the moment. Enjoy the moment when it happens. And that's exactly what Coco was. And that's why I'm feeling it and I'm needing it now. And that's why I'm also worried about the fact that Coco might, dis might disappear. I'm not saying that uh, Chanel will discontinue Coco altogether, but they will reduce it. They will reduce all of their fragrance range, unless they don't go cheap on us and they water them down because of certain ingredients missing. Whether they be ingredients uh, that are made in laboratories, but that need some chemicals that might come from some countries with which Europe might not be in good relationships at the moment for whatever reason there's always some reason there's always something that can happen that can block and delete and hinder in some sort of way uh, the production the quality production of a certain fragrance so i thought well now is the time this is the last batch we have who knows if they're gonna create them again in that luxurious way in the near future, so let me enjoy it now while I can. And boy, does it deliver. It it really brings back a feeling of opulence, and it, it allows you to escape, basically. I know escapism is not the best thing because you should confront reality, but God damn it, I think we really deserve a break. Uh, we've been through a lot lately, and each and every one of us finds w their own way to escape reality, even if just for a moment or two. Some people play video games, I know Animal Crossing has been a huge thing in the community, community, the gamer community, not in the perfume community. I know that other people escape in movies, mostly oldies, like the older the movie, the better, because it really gives you a feeling of how better times were in the past. I personally escape in perfumes and in productivity. Productivity meaning I produce more, I read more, I, you know, I record myself reading, I film videos for you guys. That makes me feel productive, it makes me feel accomplished in a certain way. And then the perfumes allow me to escape in these worlds. It's not a full-blown negative escapism that is in denial of reality because when I wear these perfumes and they do let me escape into my own special worlds, I go to those worlds to harvest ideas to be able to be more productive in my future videos. So I utilize my escapism in a productive way. And I think that's what perfumes are to me and what cocoa in particular is to me. Uh, in this moment in time, 
it allows me to open all of these portals inside of my soul, inside of my being, and it allows me to harvest ideas. It allows me to harvest energies, to harvest moods. And, and then the trick is to transform and transfer those moods into something constructive and productive into an actual product. In my case, the product is a video that I might make for you guys or an audio recording or a podcast that I might record for you guys. And it's all thanks to the perfumes. Now, of course, it's also all thanks to my own energy because I do deliver something of my own to the table and then perfumes enhance that. But I do believe that we should all consider perfumes as way more important than they truly that, that, that they're thought to be, because most of the time people just consider them as a little enhancer to go on a date. No. Perfumes should be worn on a date with yourself. Oh, here's an interesting... In this moment, some of you have been mentioning that uh, it's so funny what I've been doing to this uh, poor uh, soap box, but I, quite frankly, you guys, I was shocked when I opened it like this, right? And I looked through it, and I was like, how is it possible? It's painted black inside. And yet, because it's illuminated from the outside, so from the inside, we see the white label that's outside we see it on the inside so that shocked me and i was trying to figure out with my finger if if the the part with the cocoa uh, soap label if it was thinner and that if the whole cardboard box was made thinner and that white label was translucent in some way because how can you see it from the inside so i was really shocked and i was testing that out and of course me being very scientific about it turned out to look in a different way in the actual video sorry about that you guys it was not my intention nasty minds clean get, get your minds out of the gutter um but uh, yeah and here's the soap now the touching that soap is also incredible and that foliage and how they kind of like wrap it together and put that sticker on top oh. yeah they don't do that anymore nowadays it's just amazing and the fact that the soap has that diamond cut shape of the soap bar has a diamond cut shape of the stopper of the Chanel Number no. Five Pure Perfume bottle, and of course, subsequently, the Coco Pure Perfume bottle as well, as well as now the Eau de Parfum sprays. That glass stopper is the exact same shape as the bar of soap. Not just that, but also the bottle itself has that shape all around. The the stopper is more like it. The bottle is a slightly transferred and transformed shape of the stopper turned into into the bottle. Now. Coco loved that particular diamond cut shape. Uh, it is said also that um, the Plus Vendôme is supposed to have that dame, uh, dame, the diamond cut, uh, the diamond cut um, stopper shape. That's where it is said. Again, legend says that the Plus Vendôme was used as an inspiration for the stopper of Chanel Number no. Five. Of course, we know that's not true because the first stopper of Chanel Number no. Five did not have that shape. It was a more square, thin. Uh, crystalline cut uh, to resemble more a flask of an alcohol flask. You can also see all that in my perfume review of Chanel Number no. Five, but also I've posted pictures of the original bottle on my Instagram. Um, but Chanel loved that shape so much so that when uh, the Vatheimers invited her to come, and she was already battling. This was after the war. She was battling them for the rights for to get her perfumes back. She asked them. Uh, well, they invited her to New York to get a. Uh, to create Chanel Perfumes headquarters for, for herself. And she put, well, she went there. She did it. It was a huge battle. There's a book about that as well. Really interesting to read. Anyway, she made the entrance to the building, well, to that particular space inside the building that is dedicated to Chanel Perfumes and Cosmetics. This was in the 50s. She made that in the shape that door, like to push and open, to enter this realm of Chanel Perfumes was the diamond cut stopper of the Chanel Number no. Five bottle, in huge. So you always have to push the stopper in, or you pull it out. I think it was pulling it out. Yeah, that you couldn't push in the door. You had to pull it out. So it's literally like opening a bottle of perfume. It's like taking the stopper out of the perfume and then entering the space. And that's uh, how much she loved that shape. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've liked uh, this review of these products and also my thought process on cocoa and the importance of perfumes nowadays and the importance of also treasuring and valuing what we have, what we already have. And we should also be less greedy about always new, new, new. When is the new perfume coming out? When is the new release coming out? You know, we already have incredible things out there already made for us. We don't always need the new. Maybe we should just stop for a second, use this time 
that we have now in this isolation, in this creepy time we're living in. Use it. Stop. Stop asking what's coming up next and rather look at what we already got. Enjoy what we already got. Rejoice in what we already got and discover all the facets and nuances and the beauty of the things that we already have. As I said, if it wasn't for this particular moment in time when I had the time to dedicate more to myself, I would have never really discovered, or not that soon at least, the magic of layering the cocoa shower gel with the cocoa body lotion and the cocoa eau de parfum together. It opened up that secret gate to that secret garden full of these most majestic pink, rosy May roses. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Deco Ball Spell Together. I'm also on Patreon. And thank you so much to my patrons for helping out the channel. In particular, in these trying times, I would not be here without you guys. Thank you so much. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.